So in this example um, shown here, I've got the CNR files from the DNA and the RNA. This is P13 uh, MISO2, and uh, I brought along the segmented calls as well. Now, our ultimate goal is to create a combined CNR and a combined CNS file uh, that integrates this data. So first I'm going to just open these CNR files to show you what is inside. So a CNR file in CNV kit is basically probe level data. So this was a bin uh, on chromosome 1 uh, with a start and end um, position here. Anti-target means this was uh, an off-target bin and if there's a name it usually means this is an exon from that gene. And this is the inferred copy number at that particular bin. Now obviously there's going to be noise from bin to bin but uh, that's where this, the CNS files come in because you can segment this data. Uh, the other important uh, thing to consider is this weight. So not all bins uh, provide similar levels of information. So what CMVKit does is it will take a reference and if there is a bin that is particularly noisy in the reference, it will assume that that bin will also be noisy in your sample and therefore it ascribes that bin a lower weight. So you can see that this bin has a relatively high weight of 0.6 whereas this bin has a relatively low weight of 0.16. Uh, so when the segmentation algorithm, which is CBS, segments the data, it will actually take into account these weights and give more weight to this bin than this bin when segmenting the data. So here is the CNR file from the RNA data. Mostly the same information will be here, although a little bit different. Um, again, because this is now RNA, you will not have any uh, anti-target. Every gene here will be just an entire gene. You also won't have exome level data um, or exon level data because uh, we're inferring the copy number uh, at a particular gene's coordinate. Um, you'll notice that for the RNA files you'll have here 8,600 genes. So there's around 24,000 genes in the genome but only 8,600 are sufficiently expressed that you could attempt to infer copy number information based on their expression. By contrast on the DNA you'll typically see about 30 uh, 35,000 rows here. Uh, so that corresponds each interval, uh, typically an exon, will have a row and then uh, these anti-targets will supplement uh, those. So these are bins that were created from the off-target reads. Uh, so 35,000 is a common number from UCSF 500 data. But as you can imagine, if we were able to combine this and this, that would of course increase the um, resolution or number of positions across the genome uh, from which we could infer copy number information. So that's what we're going to do here. Now as I discussed we are not even going to attempt to infer copy number information over the sex chromosome so I'm just going to uh, delete these probes here. Uh, I'm going to do this manually in Excel but I would encourage you guys to write a little script to do this um, so that you could loop it over all of the samples. And now I will do the same for the RNA. Okay. And again, I'm going to manually combine these, um, but this is something that could be much more efficiently done if one wrote a script. So let me freeze this pane. And I'm freezing these panes because these columns are not exactly analogous. Uh, so what we'll do here is we will append the RNA data to the end of the DNA data, and then we can resort to put this in uh, the correct order. So the first thing that's irritating is the uh, transcriptome uh, doesn't include the CHR, so just to make things uniform, I'm going to have to concatenate CHR to each one of these chromosomes. We'll copy and paste that down. I'll copy this, paste values, because right now it's a formula in Excel. And now we have our chromosomal coordinates for our RNA, which we'll add here. 
Uh, next, we need start, end, gene, and then depth. So fortunately, we have start, end, gene. Uh, depth is not the next column in the RNA-CNR, so we'll just copy and paste these three. Now we need depth, log2, weight. So depth, these are a little out of order, be careful here. Or write a script to do this for you, which would be the safer way to do this. Okay. log two, and finally weight. And here too is an area to be careful. So for the RNA, the weight is calculated a little bit differently. Uh, so here, as you can imagine, the expression of a gene will generally correlate with its copy number, but it doesn't necessarily have to correlate with its copy number. So the weight for the RNA uh, is largely calculated based on how well uh, genes correlate with copy number in an independent data set, and that was an input that Jess used when she created this. The input was created from TCJ data where we simply calculated a correlation coefficient uh, for each one of these genes, uh, asking in that independent data set, TCJ, how well its expression correlated with copy number. Uh, so for instance, you could see this has a very high correlation coefficient, meaning that this gene, which I assume is a housekeeping gene, probably uh, correlates pretty well with copy number. Um, whereas um, uh, other genes, most of these are uh, kind of high. This one's zero, meaning that there's probably virtually no correlation. Uh, other genes are less. But these weights are relative within this RNA file, but a weight of 0.67 is not the same as a weight of uh, 0.67 here. Now, there's not a magical way to make these equivalent, but generally speaking, I think that gene expression measurements are less reliable indicators of copy number than true depth from DNA sequencing data. So I'm going to suggest that we just half these weights, and I will do that here. Okay, now I'm going to copy this paste as values, which you won't have to do if you write a script to do this. So now that this is no longer a formula, I can copy these here. Okay, so to recap, we have basically taken the RNA CNR file, added it to the end of the DNA CNR file. We have the weight for the RNA files, and of course we took care to make sure that the columns lined up. So I'm going to go ahead and close this. Now we need to sort this uh, in the proper order uh, because this goes 1 to 22 and then starts over again for the new probes. Uh, because this is alphanumeric, I'm actually going to create a new column here that removes the CHRs just for the purposes of sorting. Copy that, control H, find CHR, replace it with nothing. I only highlighted that column, so it only applied this to that column. So now let's sort by this column that we added at the end, smallest to largest, and by start, and by end. All right. So you notice that there used to be long runs of anti-targets, but now they've been intercalated uh, with presumably some RNA uh, expression probes. And then you'll get occasionally long runs of the same gene. This is probably a gene that was on the UCSF panel, and these are all individual exons. All right, I'm going to delete this column. And this is our new combined CNR file. So... 
Excel is not very good at saving random uh, file extensions that it's never heard of. So I'm actually going to copy this into Text Wrangler, paste that, and now we can save this in this combined file. We'll call it combined.cnr, let's remove the text extension. Uh, and this is just a very basic text format. So definitely don't save that because you don't want to save over your DNA data. Uh, the new combined CNR file is here. All right, so we've created a CNR file that merges the DNA and RNA data. So now you can simply use CMV kit to segment this. So segment combined combined.cnr. Of course, to do this, you will have to run this on the command line. So you cannot run this on DNA Nexus. So you will have to actually install CMP kit on your computer. So one thing I always like to do is run this call function. So sometimes segments can systematically be uh, off a little bit. So we can take the median segment value and just adjust um, everything by uh, just require that the median segment value be equal to zero. So CMV kit call dash dash center. The default is median. Uh, let's tell it the file to center. Excuse me. Uh, we don't have to go in that file. Combined dot CNS. Do this in the other order. So let's tell the file name and then dash dash center. CNS. Okay, as you can see, they weren't too far off, but um, all of the segment values were shifted by 0.07. So the data will be a little bit better now. Um, I've outputted all these into the folder I'm working in, so I'm going to move these to the combined folder. All right, so now we have CNR and CNS files for DNA, RNA, and combined. Let's see how they look. So I'm going to create a scatter plot of the CNR file. I'm going to overlay the segmented data. Make sure you overlay the call segmented data. And I'm going to output this as combined scatter.pdf. All right, then we'll do this for the DNA too and see if the combined is better. Let's see if this worked. So there's the combined, and here's the DNA. So we do not believe there are any true copy number alterations in this file. Uh, as you can see, the DNA scatter, there are quite a few segments that uh, this color means they've reached a threshold that uh, they would be considered a copy number alteration. If we switch back to the combined, it's not perfect, but I would say it's much better. Uh, so overall, I would argue that merging this data, uh, it, it both increased the resolution by adding another, you know, roughly 8,000 data points, but also 
uh, even though the RNA data was itself a little bit noisy, um, 